yeah so friends uh, in this our series of uh, how we achieved over 20% savings in our uh, energy performance contracts uh, that we did uh, in last 10 years uh, at more than 15 locations so based on that learning uh, we have prepared this eight session series and yeah. uh, you are attending that so friends uh, in this our series of uh, how we achieved over 20% savings in our uh, energy performance contracts today's uh, session is on implementation of energy efficiency projects so friends uh, first of all what does it require it basically requires a combination of energy efficiency and project management expertise so unless and until both things are not there uh, it's difficult that uh, we can get the uh, best of the benefits from the energy efficiency project so i just repeat it's the combination of energy efficiency and project management expertise even if only energy efficiency expertise is there and project management expertise is not there even in that case uh, we may not get the best of the results getting further so these are uh, our eight sessions uh, we have seen uh, how uh, defining baseline and ideation takes place then was uh, finalization of uh, energy efficiency project then was financing then was procurement and uh, then uh, today we will deliberate on uh, implementation and then uh, the next uh, tuesday uh, we will have daily and monthly uh, monitoring and verification of savings because once the implementation is done it is equally important to Uh, measure uh, the savings and measure the outcome of the project and then once the project is commissioned then how is operation and maintenance of energy efficiency project is important that we will discuss on 16th november and finally uh, we will have a summary and take away on 23rd uh, november it's very important to learn uh, it's not that that we have been doing all these things uh, uh, since last uh, 10 years and we have done so many projects uh that doesn't mean that that we do not require to learn even even we require to learn the only difference with experience that happens is you learn really fast so friends whatever your questions are whatever your queries are please do mention that uh, in the uh, question box uh, we will be answering all of them in the end of the session right so we will just revise what all things we have seen in the previous sessions it's very important uh So the first one was uh, key learning baselining. See, energy efficiency project is basically a difference of two numbers: how much was consumption earlier and how much is the consumption now. It can be electricity, it can be fuel, right? It can be anything, but there has to be a very clear cut baseline. I mean, what was my pre-project scenario? That should be very very clear, right? So if we do not define this properly, and then the energy consumption is also dependent on production. or it is also dependent on occupancy so those factors have to be accounted for in uh, a very very proper sense there is a regression method that is applied right because when you implement the project so after the implementation of the project your production may go up or after implementation of the project your production may go down right so in both of the cases how will you account for this particular factor so that's very important in baselining right and that method has to be agreeable to all the stakeholders right all the stakeholder means the plant engineering uh, side the management side the production side the esco side the bank side all all should be uh, through with it right however we still suggest that keep it simple right so that everybody understands it right and uh, transparency really works that whatsoever is the uh, data right nobody is asking your uh, production details or your uh, quality details or your chemistry aspects of your production process details but it is only about the energy data right so that has to be very transparently uh, shared right and then uh, the moment what happens is uh, for example there is a building right uh, and then uh, we get that uh, uh, this uh, hotel or hospital is consuming Uh, this much of uh, kwh uh, uh, per year per bed right or per room right so like this the moment you get the number since you are working in that field automatically you are able to say that what is the saving potential there just by looking at that number right so baselining correct baselining actually gives us a first feel of uh, uh, what is the saving potential there right and energy saving is a long term phenomena because even if you have implemented a project you will get in electrical form you will get a kilowatt saving but as many uh, hours it is used uh, then only you will get kws savings so uh, this is the project uh, uh, which we have seen that the green line is basically our pre project scenario and end of the day everything has to be put in cost terms 
because there will be electricity, there will be different types of fuel, right? But at cost level, everything can be equated, right? And either you go to the previous cost numbers or you go to the uh, current cost numbers, right? Or you can fix the cost numbers, right? In any of the method, uh, you can do this uh, kind of calculations. But when you demonstrate these kind of savings, right, to uh, the finance team, to the management, then and only then uh, greater acceptance of energy efficiency project comes into picture. So expectation from energy efficiency is always difference between two numbers. The first line is baseline. And the second one is the outcome from your ideation. Ideation means the idea which is coming to us for energy saving, right? So difference is these two numbers is the key. Then ideation means once you uh, start working on energy efficiency project, you'll find that there are plenty of projects, plenty of projects. And these projects are as many as number of medicines uh, there in the uh, medical shop. But our doctor gives us four, five, six medicines only, right? And then we get right. So the beauty of uh, any energy conservation exercises is to get to those four or five projects which are manageable, which are implementable. And uh, by doing that, uh, we get to the desired result, right? Because we will basically target, right, uh, that 10% savings or 15% savings or 20 or 25, whatever, up to 30%. We have seen that, that it is possible, right? So first of all, diagnosis for the higher energy consumption, that is very important, right? Because number of technologies are as many as number of medicines, right? And there is, there, there is nothing big about uh, any energy efficiency technology, right? The big thing is that your right selection of the energy saving technologies, because whether you implement A project or B project, in both of the cases, you are investing money, you are investing capital, right? Whether it is from the client side or whether it is from the banker side or whether it is from the ESCO side, it is the money invested versus money saved. Because end of the day, any energy saving project will basically be saving energy. That means saving money, right? So that is why every energy saving project can compete with another project, right? Like for example, LED project can compete with uh, uh, energy efficient motor. Energy efficient motor project can compete with uh, chillers. Chillers can compete with compressor. So obviously wherever the ROI is highest, right? So those are the project which needs to be picked up. Not just that, that this is one idea, this is a good idea, so just implement that, right? That doesn't tell us that, is there any other opportunity which can give me better ROI? So that is why a holistic approach is extremely necessary. Right. So this is how the ideation is phenomenal in terms of numbers. Right. But then we have to pick and choose a few of them. Right. So the picking and choosing few of them, uh, that process is called as finalization. So ideation and finalization, we do it in two different steps. Right. Because ideation, we believe in that let there be as many as idea. Uh, come uh, to the picture and then when we finalize then we see to it that let there be four to six or maximum eight depending on size of a unit and choose that many and then uh, uh, deliver the result because end of the day it's not important whether you have done this project or that project end of the day i mean are all the stakeholders agreeing uh, to the overall savings which you have committed and whether that much of saving is coming or not so that is the key so that is why uh, finalization of the project is uh, to be done very very carefully right and it is a converging exercise ideation is a diverging exercise you see to it that that no idea should be left out but when you are finalizing then you are converging and then you are selecting a few of them right because it is ultimately that rupee saving whatever you have uh, uh, planned that whether you are getting or not that's the only thing right doesn't matter you have implemented four projects or you have implemented six projects right whatever is the planned outcome right your actual outcome must exceed that right so here the learning is there are plenty of medicines in a medical shop but the doctor prescribes a few based on the diagnosis so that's what exactly happens in energy efficiency project and we have followed these lines and that has helped us so let's see next so then the financing right the financing can be internal financing can be external right it can be anywhere, right? But any energy efficiency project requires that investment, right? And usually the finance people do not have the outcome, um, idea of the outcome, whether it will deliver that much of savings or not. With renewable energy, what happens is everybody is aware, right? That one uh, kilowatt uh, solar uh, unit will deliver us um, 
uh, electricity generation of uh, uh, four units or 4.25 units or 4.5 units, right? Or in some of the advanced panel, one can get uh, five units also uh, during the uh, summer season, right? So there is a reasonable acceptance of the outcome, right? Whereas in energy efficiency project, the outcome is known or understood only to the technical people, right? Okay, so that's why it becomes more difficult to convince a finance team that uh, uh, there is so much of savings, right? But that is the key, right? And that is why uh, those who say that, that I'm responsible for delivering the savings, then it works, right? Even if it is a plant person, right? Even uh, it is an energy auditor, even it is an ESCO, right? So somebody has to take the responsibility and ESCOs by the mean, by the term ESCO itself, they basically take the responsibility of delivering energy cost saving. Right, not just the project implementation, not just the project ID, identification. So that is how the uh, ESCO's positioning, as far as taking the uh, responsibility of the outcome, becomes much more comfortable, right, from finance point of view. Right, and that's how uh, it's not necessary that every energy efficiency project requires a budget. Then was the procurement. Right. So in procurement, we learned that uh, we need to do life cycle costing because what happens is any energy efficient project or technology will be will never be L1, right? Because if you want to buy a motor, right, your uh, I1 or I2 motor, right? Nowadays I1 is not available. I2 motor is going to be the cheapest motor, right? However, if you go for I4 or I5 motor, right, they will be uh, costing much more, but they will be consuming much lesser energy. So this exercise, all of us as individual, right, do very well with our uh, two-wheeler or with our four-wheeler or with LED lights, right. But beyond these two technologies, right, we have not been able to do a fair justice with uh, energy efficiency. Uh, I hope you will all agree with it, right. But the availability of technology is there in every field. It's not just about LED or it's not just about uh, solar photovoltaic, right? Or it is not just about uh, energy efficient uh, two-wheeler or a four-wheeler, right? So when the procurement is done to ESCO, so ESCO becomes a single point responsibility taker for everything, right? And that is the expectation from any energy saving project. And that's how uh, when ESCO implement an energy saving project, uh, the outcome uh, is achieved in a very, very transparent and with lots of certainty, right? And when ESCO commits that they will deliver this much of saving, so they have actually delivered this much of savings in their earlier experiences. It's not just about commissioning a motor or commissioning an energy efficient chiller, right? That is end of the day, just a nut bolting, right? But how has been the past experience or past knowledge of actual energy saved? That helps a lot. Let's proceed further with our uh, today's topic that is implementation of uh, energy efficiency project. So friends, it's a combination of energy efficiency and project management expertise. Anything falling short, any one of these two falling short will not deliver this. That's the key, right? So today's contents are like this, right? The first is mindset. For doing energy efficiency project, we really require a different mindset and we will elaborate on that. Time is key. That way we say time is key for everything, but in an energy efficiency project, uh, time responsibility or time issues are much bigger. We will see that with example, right? And then all the issues of energy efficiency project has to be addressed in totality. Anything falls short, the outcome uh, either is not there or out expected outcome is not there, right? Then what is the process of uh, energy efficiency project implementation? That also we will see. And all these things, are based on our own uh, experience, right? The role of uh, OEMs and ESCOs and client and other stakeholders, this I share in every session because this is very important, right? Unless and until these all four uh, uh, form a good team, right? The outcome uh, doesn't come, right? So that is why it is very, very important. ESCOs can take responsibility from uh, OEM side, right? And also from the banking side at times, right? But all four, has to uh, do a good job, right? Then what we will see what are the key issues in energy efficiency project implementation. We will also see what is the future of energy efficiency project implementation. Then uh, as uh, uh, in all other sessions we have seen, we will see the case studies. 
right? And uh, what are the uh, energy efficiency, successful retrofit technologies which are making a big difference in energy consumption these days? We will see that, and we will see more case studies, right? So, friends, it's all about cost versus value, right? And we have to uh, reach to higher value with lesser cost. So that has to be the key in implementing any uh, energy efficiency project, right? And for all this, somebody has to be accountable, right? Because uh, all the numbers are on paper or on uh, paperless kind of a scenario that this is the energy saving and this is the payback and this is the cost, right? But these are the numbers, right? But who is accountable for making those numbers true, right? That is the key in any energy efficiency uh, project implementation. So friends, let's proceed further. The first point, that is the mindset, right? Why is that the mindset uh, plays uh, the biggest role in uh, uh, implementing energy efficiency project, right? Because everyone, whosoever is With a fixed mindset. And when we do growth mindset, we definitely do new things, right? And every new thing is not necessary that, that it will fall uh, in success case only, right? But corrective actions are needed, um, improvement is needed, and end of the day, we get that kind of an outcome right so that is the growth mindset that's what i mean here right and that is uh, something which is very very important right and you are trying to do something which you have not done right you have not done means that that particular unit has not seen that kind of energy efficiency project if they would have seen that they would have implemented it themselves right okay so the unit is not convinced right because they are not aware of the project so first is awareness that is brought into the picture uh, the units are convinced with the project based on uh, sharing the previous uh, past successful case studies and the responsibility of the outcome that is also taken then then and only then uh, the units get ready uh, for implementing energy efficiency project and asco has to take the responsibility of the outcome right because it's not that they are supplying motors or they are supplying chillers or they are supplying leds what they are doing is they are actually selling uh, energy cost reduction that what is their business and they must deliver that right so as we have seen here that the growth mindset that is needed and that growth mindset a person actually migrates from the previous situation to the uh, projected situation this picture tries to explain that what it means right because definitely you are going to see something which has not at least happened or has not implemented in that unit right so that unit as such is definitely going to see that particular project first time Right? So it's, it's a growth mindset that, that is needed, right? Because if we say that it's a fixed mindset, because everybody's experience has value, right? The plant is running, and the plant people are running the plant since many years, right? And they have done the production, right? And it is their competence to deliver the production, right? The ESCOs or energy efficiency only does the part of energy savings, right? They, they, they are not uh, coming from <coughs> any production background or any maintenance background, right? So everybody in the team needs to have the growth mindset. This can further be uh, better understood by this. Right? There's so many aspects which um, are key to it, right? Like for example, a growth mindset will say failure is an opportunity to grow, right? This this is how the reaction would be, right? Okay. Whereas fixed mindset will have will have absolutely uh, a fixed um, approach of taking things, right? So let's come back to our energy efficiency uh, aspects. So buyer of energy efficiency, right, which is the end user, right, is investing for the results and not for the product or service, right, because end of the day, right, uh, the production is going on, that there's no problem in the production or the quality of the production or the throughput of the production. It's only the energy efficiency intervention that is the reason for uh, taking up a particular project, right. So the buyer of energy efficiency is investing for the results, right, and not for the product and service, right. 
So this is very important for any ESCO, right, to keep in mind that why and what the, the customer is looking for, right? And when we uh, brought this kind of a mindset into our team, the, the outcomes were completely different, right? It has to be a team-based approach, right? Uh, people from uh, customers plant, right, are equally uh, participant in implementation of a project, right? And then only then it works, right? The banker has to understand uh, the energy saving calculations, right? Uh, ESCOs have to understand the way bankers look at a project, right? And both bankers as well as ESCOs has, have to understand that how the decision making uh, is happening at, at, at a client's place, right? And when all these three agree, then and only then uh, energy efficiency project, I, I'm talking about larger scale, right? Wherein we are attempting to save 20% or 30% of energy cost, right? So it is basically investment versus return. Let it be any energy saving project, right? And what happens is energy efficiency project being technical, right? Most of the time, uh, the uh, total time is put into the technical uh, things only. I'm not saying that's not important. That's definitely important, right? But what is expected out of that? That is the input, right? The output expected out of it is real, measurable, transparent way of savings, right? So that's why I clearly say in point number five, input is engineering. That is energy efficiency technology, right? That is input, right? Even if it is successfully implemented, that's not the success. But outcome is finance, right? That is your actual savings, right? That is the reason why the everything has been done, right? And that is why uh, implementation of an energy saving project is actually the input towards the project, right? And it has to deliver that outcome, right? And that is the savings. So when we are implementing a project, we need to be very, very careful that we are going to deliver the projected savings because that is the only purpose of doing an energy saving project. And that is why transparency is very important. It helps. It helps everyone, right? And then communication, what's happening? How much is the energy saving, right? Are we achieving uh, lesser savings? Are we achieving same savings? Are we achieving more savings, right? Lesser savings is, is not something which is going to be totally not accepted, right? Because you are implementing several projects. So some project, it happens that, that the actual projected savings would be comparatively lesser. But in other projects, it is more. So what happens is the call for 20% saving is the overall call, right? It's not that the, every project is delivering 20% saving. And that overall call from, from the ESCO, right, is the key reason uh, why uh, clients are retaining us, right? And all of these things, right, will come back right some some or the thing will go wrong right so how are you going to handle it right okay so that's also very important right but without failure right uh, it, it's not it usually doesn't happen that an energy efficiency project is implemented successfully right I'm, I'm talking about failure of a very very smaller kind of things right? it can be anything like for example piping layout was planned from this way but in actual when we are implementing it some other issues are coming up some expansion is coming up so it is going another way right so sometimes your cost goes up sometimes your cost goes down right so I, i'm talking about all that right let's see next so we've seen the mindset right let us see the mindset to one example right we have seen this example uh, in the life cycle costing case right that was uh, in the financing part of it right but let's see the how the mindset uh, plays a key role here right so Fundamentally, if we are going for energy efficiency, the first thing we have to go is for life cycle costing and not for the uh, cost of purchase because any energy efficient purchase is going to be much of higher value than of uh, uh, comparing the L1 option, right? So here in this example, we can clearly see that the life cycle cost, life cycle cost means your purchase cost as well as your energy consumption cost. So that when you compare that, then you will find that the energy efficient uh, procurement is going to give you a lesser uh, life cycle costing, right? Whereas the purchase cost, right? You may find that the uh, purchase cost of uh, uh, standard motor, right, is going to be lesser than the energy efficient motor, right? So fundamental thing is that our understanding of capex versus opex, right? So unless and until it is brought to one number. And that is your life cycle cost. In life cycle cost, you may take five years or you may take 10 years. That is dependent on that particular technology or that particular business. But it has to be brought to a life cycle costing and not just capital cost, right? And when you see the longer one, right? 
you will find that the cost is there in the energy consumption because energy consumption is something which is recurring which is happening every second which is happening every day which is happening every year which is happening throughout the life of the uh, equipment right whereas the capital is invested once only right so incremented co incremental cost of capital invested if you try to calculate its payback that's another way of uh, doing life cycle costing in a in a faster way right that also helps in decision making and all these numbers has to be brought to the decision maker because decision maker believe me understands number very well right they will only be asking you that whether i am going to get this outcome or not and who is responsible for that they will be asking only these two things right and this is what has happened in our uh, in, in my career i have seen that i am asked only these two numbers and when we say that that we are responsible for delivering these two numbers then the decision maker is very comfortable then we move to the next part that is time time is key right because the focus is on returns than investment right because if the returns are good any investment can be justified right so the fundamental part is not the cost of the project but the returns from the project that is how it is fundamentally different than the normal uh, uh, investments right and then a delay in implementation is actually loss of savings right if if any project is conceptualized and it is decided to implement it right but suppose the budget is not there suppose uh, the equipment is not getting supplied in time right so it's it's a loss for savings every day that is how we have to uh, look at it right and uh, usually the cost of uh, energy efficiency project is normally higher by 1.15 times we, we have seen that than the normal projects right because there are several other activities which are performed here first is monitoring and verification of savings right that is normally not there in in other projects right long term guarantee right because uh, the equipment guarantee has to be long term right and faster uh, pace of uh, project implementation right because um, the thing should start as early as possible that is how uh, the mindset is and for that right um, like for example in this uh, example i have shared that escos may uh, choose to uh, stock energy efficient motor because if you try to purchase an energy efficient motor i am talking about i4 or i5 then your supply time is almost 3 to 4 months right and that also means that 3 to 4 months your savings are gone okay then there has to be least shutdown time right because energy efficiency project is meant for gains right not for the production loss right so how to manage that how to do that so a lot of uh, effort goes into arriving at uh, how uh, to do it in the least shutdown time or when already shutdown is planned doing energy saving project at that point of time right so the fundamental concept here is that your equipment guarantee or warranty must be more than uh, the payback period right because till payback period right it is the investment which is getting uh, repaid right but after the uh, investment is paid right then whatever is the gain that is the real gain right so that is how time is the key right we can see uh, through these pictures so that is how the implementation any any energy efficiency project implementation must consider um, uh, importance of time let's see this with one very interesting example there are two tables let me explain you that right uh, so in one case uh, i mean the first case the annual savings are around 10 lakhs right the investment is 15 lakhs and the payback period is uh, 1.5 years that is uh, 18 months right you will divide the investment by annual savings right so you will find that the uh, payback period is uh, actually one and a half year which is 18 months right and then uh, there is another thought right that a uh, lot of time is taken uh, in doing energy efficiency project we have seen that right first is that uh, to take the decision first of all right because energy efficiency uh, project implementation is not normal um, activity or day to day activity of the uh, plant or of the company right so so it is these kind of decisions usually uh, become second or third priority right uh, during the course of time so that takes a lot of time then budgeting take lots of time then implementation also takes a lot of time so for example just consider that uh, uh, it has got delayed by 6 uh, months right so what happens here is savings loss right um, because of the delay right in that financial year becomes 5 lakh right because total savings were uh, 10 lakh right and it took additional 6 months 
to implement the project. So that means five lakh of saving is gone, right? So of course, in the next consecutive year, there will not be any loss, but in the first year of implementation, the year where you are expecting that it should give you a real uh, cash flow benefit, at that point of time, uh, you are finding that uh, five lakh uh, rupees are gone for this, right? So this must be considered, right? Let us take the example in the next table. Same annual savings 10 lakh, same investment of 15 lakh, right? Payback period is 18 months, right? And additional time taken, right, is six months, right? Now, what uh, has been done is the implementation cost. We have seen that many times because uh, plant people also have competence uh, to implement the project, right? They might not be that good in terms of identifying a project, but they are definitely good uh, in terms of implementing because they have they have set up the plant, right? They have set up the um, machines, right? So any energy efficiency project, uh, even they can also implement it, right? But let's say that uh, because of uh, further uh, due diligence or further work on it, that the energy cost is brought down by 10%, right? Let's say, I mean, difference would be there or can be there up to 10% even, right? Okay. So then what happens is that 15 lakh has now become 13 lakh 50,000, right? So there is a net saving of 1.5 lakhs, right? But friends, what we are missing here is that the project has taken six months for implementation and that six months of implementation means 5 lakh rupees gone, right? So here, are we going to take 1.5 lakh gain or we are going to take 5 lakh gone? That decision is with you, right? So that is why uh, we very strongly say that time is uh, a key aspect in implementing energy efficiency project, right? Okay. So I hope this example very clearly explains the importance of time, right? So let's move next. So we see that there are so many uh, aspects which are very important, right? Uh, today we are into the fifth session, right? And then there are total eight sessions, right? And then there are so many things. So how can all these things uh, be done properly, right? The first one starts with the baseline as we discussed earlier, right? Then the ideas, then finalizing the project, getting finance, procurement, implementation, monitoring savings, corrective actions, right? And handling failures, right? And that is the reason uh, nowadays what is happening is projects implemented by ESCOs are, are delivering much, much better results. Let us see uh, the process of uh, energy efficiency project implementation. Right? So uh, like when we see uh, the procurement or implementation, so we thought that that let us have the complete broader width right, in terms of any process. right? So uh, the process here is uh, exactly the same. Right? Uh, first of all, we have to come up with the target right? in any uh, energy efficiency exercise. What is that which we are looking for? If you are looking for a 5% saving or you are looking for a 10% or even up to 30%. But in every case, your selection of project is going to be different. So what is that you are looking for, right? That has to be decided by the by the customer first, right? That he is looking for this much percentage of savings. Then ESCO's job is to find out that how can ESCO deliver that much percentage of savings and what would be the best combination of project to deliver that kind of a result, right? That is how it is possible. And we can understand that uh what would be the best combination of project for that particular thing right then um identify your partner is very important right there are many new technologies which are coming up which are getting implemented right then uh partners are very necessary right be it coming from oem side be it coming from energy auditor side be it coming from uh the ESCO side right that is a choice but that is very important and then uh, identifying the energy efficiency project with investment and ROI, right? At end of the day, you see, these three numbers are very common, right? But who is billing the cat, right? That is very important, right? These three numbers, end of the day, if it is not achieved, then who is responsible, right? That is very key issue, right? And that is why most of the energy efficiency exercise, I mean, I'm very sorry to say that, remains on paper. And these days, um, we are paperless, right? So, so the ideas remain at idea place only, right? And they don't see the reality, right? And then what happens is the one who is belling the cat, right? That's the procurement because it is he who will be answered uh, that what will be the uh, savings and all, right? So we have seen that this kind of approach works much, much better, right? 
even if it is for an esco even in uh, that esco company there would be one person who is responsible for the project right so we we do not believe in having a purchase separate purchase department let let me say this out very clearly right we may not that's why i say that that we may reach to 1.15 times higher uh, the cost of procurement but overall if you see the time management the overall outcome that is most important right because suppose if the l1 product is procured and if the savings are not there then who is responsible right so even if the projects are handled uh, in a company let's say esco let's say c tech solutions which is esco which is handling a project we always rely on one person who is head of that particular project right who is project manager he takes all the calls whatever it is right whether it's a financial call whether it's a procurement call and this fifth step is is the reason for success right because end of the day it is he who is standing out that i'm going to deliver the sale right then measurement and uh, monitoring right the progress is very very important right that that happens in any project right so here we have to monitor the progress monitor the outcome uh, with with savings also right and the, it has to be communicated to all the stakeholders that is key right if the savings are there it has to be communicated savings are less it has to be communicated if savings are coming exactly as projected that also has to be communicated because when you do communication in a transparent manner a lot of buy in comes in right even at a, a inside a plant right it is very important for energy efficiency project uh, gets the buy in from all the uh, departments from all the stakeholders that's very key right then um, and that is why uh, i always emphasize that the oem esco client and other stakeholders all uh, should have a consensus then and only then a successfully uh, energy efficiency project can be implemented otherwise it's it's very very difficult right and it's completely completely a teamwork with different responsibilities right so that's how we equate it with a with a uh, game of the cricket right there are some batsmen some bowlers right but then there is a opener right so there is a speciality in in everything right and and that big set of team is needed uh, to successfully uh, do a, a a big energy saving project wherein we are talking about 15% 20% or 25% of the savings now uh, let us see these examples uh, i repeatedly sh uh, show case these examples because what is happening here right again uh, the this is the project wherein the uh, electrical heating is converted into biogas fired thermic fluid heating right because end of the day process has a heating requirement right and uh, if you see uh, cost of heating right uh, that is cost of energy through electricity for heating purpose and through biomass right that is include incorporating biomass efficiency level at every place right even in that case your bucket fired thermic fluid heater is far more cheaper right that it is delivering you a saving of 65% and ghg emission reduction of 95% right but end of the day what um, is liked by um, the management or liked by the uh, finance finance professional is these two numbers what is the monthly saving so that is 5.75 lakhs and what is the monthly emi that is 3.85 lakhs so there is a net cash flow gain of 1.9 lakhs right and when this is delivered right then the acceptance for the project is phenomenal phenomenal believe me because leave that we have done a energy efficiency project leave that we have done a jg emission reduction project leave that that this is a great contribution to sustainability But the fundamental thing which is happening inside a company is it is 1.9 lakh is saved every month on month, and which is a big big impact to the profitability of any company, right? And that is how it has to be delivered in a very very holistic fashion, right? Same thing, right? The technologies are as many as number of medicines. I repeatedly say this one, right? Other technology, beautiful technology, evaporative condenser. Lots of very famous engineering company in the country they make it, right? but the acceptance or the um, adoptability of these project is is comparatively lesser right because uh, the acceptance but when we make the acceptance in this manner that your monthly savings are around 90000 rupees and your monthly emi is around uh, 58500 uh, rupees and you gain a net 31000 right every month that it gives a completely a different perspective right the budget allocation for the energy bill is reduced right and that is what any cfo would like to do right but he who cannot do it let me put it very point blank because this, he doesn't come from this subject background 
right? So while he may expect that, but we will have to deliver that, and it is all possible to deliver that. Okay. See, in a third project, wherein uh, air conditioning project, there are so many um, air conditioners involved, right? So a retrofit project with a better uh, COP uh, air conditioners and better COP um, uh, your your different um, air conditioning devices, right? We see here we are we we see here uh, uh, even a small uh, split AC. So all uh, putting up in a good configuration uh, gives up a, a phenomenal uh, outcome, right? So technically, there would be huge calculation for savings, right? Uh, then the project engineering, project drawing. But what matters to the company is: is there anybody who can take guarantee of these two things? What is the monthly saving that is three point six lakhs, and the EM, right? Because project has to be financed. Even if a unit is financing themselves, right, should be able to uh, repay it back, right? And the difference creator, right? So energy efficiency professionals or ESCOs are actually net flow creators, right? They create this kind of net cash flow into the system for any company, right? And that straightway adds to the profitability of the company, right? So that is how uh, we uh, um, have grown. That is how um, we have got success uh, in this field, right? So what we see, uh, what is going to happen uh, with future of energy efficiency project uh, implementation, right? Obviously, we are an ESCO, so I would uh, put it up uh, from that point of view, right? The life cycle costing, right, becomes the driver, right, in the procurement process, and not the L1, right? That 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 is the key, right? Then, uh, as I always say, that the monthly lease rental, right, or EMI, in, in a retrofit kind of a project, right. Should not should be at the most seventy five percent of monthly saving. So what is happening is that twenty five percent, right, is your net positive cash flow gain, right, for the company, right. So that much of expense on the company side is reduced, right, and that is month on month, right. Now if this kind of uh, uh, way is there for implementing energy efficiency project, obviously there is no separate budget needed, right, and. Uh, the the energy efficiency project is actually delivering a net positive cash flow right uh, uh, to the end user right and that's how the acceptance comes in a in a big big way right and um financier finances the energy efficiency project to the end user right because it, it's job of job of financer of course it is asco's responsibility to bring the financer right it can be in debt form it can be in lease form right then as goes identify uh, the energy efficiency project, guarantee the savings, uh, implement uh, the projects uh, like a turnkey contractor, and deliver the savings. Right? Friends, uh, uh, those who like Hindi movies must have seen a movie called Band Baja Barat, right? So they organize everything, right? So that's how uh, ESCO uh, does everything in an energy efficiency project, right? So let's move further. Right here, one key issue is that ESCOs maintain a very strong relationship with uh, OEMs, right? Because these are uh, those equipments, right, which are procured from uh, OEM, which are uh, delivering uh, the savings. So that is very key, right? So these are some of the projects uh, which, which we have successfully implemented, right? So in this uh, project, which was done for uh, Taj Suraj Kun, right? It's a hotel, right? Wherein we delivered 85% uh, ROI, right? And the number of projects were uh, significant, right? And these were chiller controller, these were uh, CTI approved cooling tower, VFD on HUs, right? LED laundry revamping, uh, auto tube cleaning system, heat pump. So, friends, these projects can be n number of projects, right? But there is nothing like this is a good technology or that is a good technology. We always see these kind of decisions or discussions happening, right? What is applicable to that particular plant? That is a good technology for that particular plant. That is very important, right? And we should be able to successfully demonstrate the outcome of uh, energy efficiency project like this. The green one, the line, is the baseline of energy cost before implementation of the project. And after the implementation of the project for two years, right? One is the orange line and one is the blue line, right? Uh, the energy savings were measured, monitored, and maintained. So this is the delta, right? That that is that is created uh, through energy efficiency project, and that is how uh, uh, the success to energy efficiency project is obtained. Right. 
let me share with you uh, some uh, technologies which are really very good and which are really delivering a good result but then uh, these cannot be implemented just because they are good right the application should have that kind of a suitability right then and only then these technologies will make sense right the one is auto tube cleaning system right uh, there's a lot of uh, focus on water conservation and um, uh, because of that water is getting recycled so when the recycled water is given into the condenser the tds is very high and that deposits on the uh, tubes right uh, of, of the condenser so how do you clean them right so that cleaning happens through auto tube cleaning system then any uh, commercial building air conditioning uh, has got hu fans right so there if you put uh, ec fans right or plug fans right both of the technologies are very good and they have given very good savings right then uh, heat pump application for hot water right has given uh, a phenomenal result right and um, th there are advanced controllers which are available for chillers right because during day the heat load is different during night the heat load is different right whereas chiller might operate at a constant set point right or even if we are varying the set point by one degree or two degree or half degree right whatever may be our own variation in the set point that is believe me friends it, it is arbitrary right it is giving you some outcome but that's not the best way of doing it right then evaporative condensers right even on a water cooled chiller uh, evaporative condensers are installed and they are giving good results right so you're actually your uh, a lot of saving is there in your water pumping cost right and evaporative condensers uh, have been able to successfully reduce the uh, condensing pressure also so there is some savings on the chiller side as well right then the performance of uh, cti that is cooling tower institute approved cooling tower is far better that has resulted into uh, improvement in chiller performance improvement in uh, compressor performance right then what happens is there is a boiler the big boiler which is there in a boiler house then there is a huge pipeline right that pipeline goes inside the plant right and then um, th there is a lot of uh, uh, steam distribution losses right even if you do not find a leaking steam but heat loss believe me friends is is very very high right so there are several applications wherein we have been able to replace uh, steam where we are not able to replace steam we have been put able to successfully put up a small steam generators and those steam generators right are put at the user point so like this the overall project has given a phenomenal uh, amount of savings right uh, some cases uh, voltage variation is very high right and servo stabilizers have given savings but where you will install this project right so that kind of a uh, uh, voltage fluctuation has to be analyzed at, at length right then and only then this project makes sense right and uh, these days uh, energy uh, i mean i4 and i5 motors have already started coming and they are giving phenomenal results right i mean even we were amazed to see when we saw savings are of the order of 15 percent 25 percent these are really really big numbers which are achievable right so on the center you see different technologies there are different saving potential and on the left hand side uh, you see the output the actual achieved output uh, in the commercial buildings and on the right hand side uh, you see the actual uh, implemented project in case of uh, manufacturing units right so friends end of the day we also believe in that field of energy efficiency is very wide like any other field right but finally it should get summarized in a very simple manner right so the first thing that we do is cost analysis right then there are plenty of opportunities to do this cost savings of the first step and then finally we, we have to optimize that right uh, and then uh, implement the project and finally transfer the savings right so the last step if it is missing then the purpose of the project implementation is not done right so transferring the saving transferring the savings why we use that word very clearly because this is the gain that has to happen uh, to the project owner to to the plant where the project is implemented right so this is what uh, i had to share i request kunal to uh, put up the questions please yeah Sure. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the first question is uh, how do we evaluate the new technologies uh, before implementing uh, and to ensure the savings? 
uh, very good question. Uh, see, uh, what happens is, uh, uh, let's say there are two technologies. One is uh, LED, another is power factor, right? Uh, frankly speaking, both of them must be implemented, right? But customer has this much of money only, and they may say that that I want to choose one, right? Of course, I will do both, but one I will do now, and then uh, the second one I will do it later. So, which one should I do first, right? Now, how do we evaluate? So, for doing any comparison, you have to bring down the parameters to a common table, right? So, common table would mean that how much is the investment required, how much is the saving. Right? How much is the time of implementation? Right? How much is the uh, uh, shutdown required? Right? So let's say you come up with all these four or five points. Right? And then uh, on the right hand side you prepare the column, and then you try to put some number. Right? Now obviously if you are trying to implement a, a power factor increment project, the power factor increment project can be implemented very fast as compared to LED project. Right? Like for example, if you take a commercial building, you'll find that there are 25 types of LEDs, right? At least, right? And you have to do um, implementation with all of them. You have to procure them. Then you have to do color rendering index exercise that the color should not change, right? So you'll find that the both of the, the project which will, will have completely different behavior in terms of cost of implementation, savings, ROI, time of implementation, right? And then you will be able to very clearly understand that uh, obviously it is the power factor project which has to be done first. Let's say the the investment versus outcome. Let's say uh, the percentage savings are of similar nature, right? Or the percent saving impacted on the total electricity bill of the plant that is of similar nature, right? Then you will be able to uh, conclude that. So bring down any two, three, four, five project onto common parameters, right? And then uh, you put numbers into that, right? And uh, many cases we cannot calculate, but we can call even even with qualitative exercise, right? We can we can try to put some numbers, right? And those numbers, when when seen uh, at a glance, right, they clearly give us a feel that which technology should be implemented first. Yeah. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, the next question is like, uh, how to bring focus of complete team uh, for towards energy efficiency implementation? See, this is this is something very important, right? So what we have done is that we first of all try to bring the focus of the facility in charge, right? Any facility there will be a, 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 a production manager or general manager, right? Who is in charge for the facility or all facilities, right? He is not the, the contact person for project implementation. For the project implementation, maybe the engineering head, right? Or maybe the uh, a person who is reporting to the engineering head, uh, maybe the uh, person who has been given responsibility of energy saving project or the energy manager, right? But what happens is you have to uh, take and win the confidence of the facility in charge, right? And um, uh, before uh, actually starting site activities or before actually uh, starting implementation of even a single or a small project, right? We first of all uh, uh, take the uh, participation of the uh, facility in charge, right? And then what happens is we ask facility in charge to address the gathering, like like this is what is important. And facility in charge usually uh, takes it in their daily meeting, right? Uh, or or a weekly meeting format, right? Wherein uh, the department heads of all the people they are there, right? Many people will not have any impact, right, on the project, but they should be knowing what's going on. It's very important because when a project is going to get actually implemented, right? Um, some of the project, the pipeline from the uh, a parking space was changing, right? It was changing from this to this, right? So the transportation in charge was the person whose uh, vehicle parking space was getting affected, right? But that day, no, 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 no. Our uh, facility in charge has said this, so we will provide you all the coverage, right? So that is why it has to be done. It takes a lot of time and it takes uh, additional effort. But believe me, friend, it, it it pays back in the long run. So that is why things to be done like this. So things should be done like this, right? So when when a top facility, top I mean, topmost person of the facility in charge is involved and is a part of the project, and that is why I said in my uh, earlier calls the communication. Right, so that communication has to happen in totality, right? And when everybody falls in place, you are, you are, uh, it, it is something like a, a scoring rate in a one day or in a 2020, 20, right? Initially, it, it can be smaller, but 
on, on the finishing overs, it, it comes very fast. So practically, that kind of a effect has been seen. Yeah. Next, please. Um, can you give details about the chiller controller project? Sure. Sure. Uh, see, what happens is uh, these days IoT uh, that is uh, coming up with lots of innovation, lot of invention also, right? Uh, so uh, what is happening is uh, your uh, uh, day temperature is changing uh, based on season, right? So day temperature is changing based on the day condition or a night condition, right? Your day temperature is changing based on the occupancy. Your day, temp day humidity is changing, right? So what should be the set point? What is the right set point? right how are we deciding that okay so this is the job chiller controller does it, it's a phenomenal uh, 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 work right um, done by two three good companies right depending on what kind of chiller it is uh, that's how we decide which chiller controller would suit best because we've seen uh, through years their performance right so accordingly we choose that uh, uh, chiller controller and that chiller controller uh, works with the uh, artificial intelligence, right? It, it uh, self calculates that how it should be, right? Uh, it records the data, it keeps the data, right? It also gives all the data on, on uh, cell phone, right? But the fundamental point is that it changes that setting automatically, right? It happens, see, some of the time, like for example, in, in a hotel, right? Uh, some uh, uh, large banquet is planned, right? That is not known to the uh, chiller. Uh, controller and there is no way it can be told right what chiller controller is working as per its own plan right then what may happen that uh, the the set point has to be actually lowered right because actual temperature has gone there so for that there are uh, chiller operators so they take that decision right and they override right by changing the uh, set point right so like this uh, a technology in isolation um, uh, is not seen successful right it never works right because there are a lot of things technology can do, but at the same time, a lot of things technology cannot do. So human intervention should be very important. So any project, right, uh, we, we definitely believe that, uh, like, for example, it's a car, right? But it's a, it may be a good car, but you also need to be a good driver to run it. So we always believe in uh, making a team out of a technology and this, and all put together works uh, very successfully. And this chiller controller has given very good results. Any other question, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the one uh, next question is: uh, After implementation, if savings uh, didn't come, uh, mm -hmm. then how uh, ESCO take responsibility of loss? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, all these kind of things are detailed out in the contract itself. I, I'll share what CTEC does, right? With the example of energy efficient motors, right? So. That there is a load, right, which is right now uh, consuming, uh, suppose, for example, 15 kilowatt motor is there, and right now uh, it is consuming, let's say, 12 kilowatt, right? So what CTEC would do is, uh, CTEC would carry out its uh, study, right? Uh, then uh, CTEC will say that that uh, the energy efficient motor, right, what we are uh, deciding here or we are going to put here is going to take, uh, let's say, 11.6 uh, kilowatt, right? And then uh, the the, uh, the project is procured, the payment is made, uh, uh, whether the financial is involved or not, that, that, that's a different thing, right? But for example, if the motor is taking more than 11.6 kilowatt, let's say it takes 11.7 kilowatt. So CTEC as a ESCO will take the motor back and pay, pay it back to the customer, the total amount. So that is the commitment. See, that is what is the role of ESCO, right? ESCO's role is not to recommend energy efficient motor, right? Because recommendations have been made by energy auditors since years and years and years, right? Even then, the project implementation is not happening because there's no ownership, right? Even we operated as energy auditors, right? We also felt that that there's no ownership which is coming to the uh, energy auditors, right? Uh, when we were energy auditors, right? Our job was to find out good energy saving projects and our job was to recommend that, right? Then, um, so, so the customer should not finally get the financial loss. That is the key of uh, ESCO's delivery. And that's what uh, we ensure. And motors are kept in stock, right? So what happens is it's not a real loss, right? Because that motor will get utilized somewhere else, right? Even it can get utilized in the same plant also, right? Yeah, next question, please. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. That that's all we uh, all have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I highly appreciate that on a festival day you guys uh, have spent this much of time. Right. So wish you all a very very happy Diwali, and wish you all uh, the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much.